Considering the verse, every woman that prayeth with her head uncovered dishonors her head, um, should women wear coverings at home or wherever they pray uh, every time they pray? Now, there are lots of questions similar to this, and um, I, I would notice that verse with you in verse 4. We talked about it earlier a bit in an earlier session. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. Every woman praying or prophesying with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. Uh, I mentioned that it's kind of an equation. Every, and then man, woman, praying or prophesying with their head, covered, uncovered, dishonor their head. The variables are man, woman, covered, uncovered. That's the issue. The issue is not praying or prophesying. That's going to be dealt with in chapter 14, as we read. The women are to be silent in the church. And Paul makes it perfectly clear, just in case we missed it, he tells us four times in four different ways that the women are not to speak, they're not to teach, they're not to usurp authority, they're to be silent. And I, he thought he covered all the angles, but somehow <laughs> some people seem to see a, a chink there that they can squeeze through. But he, he says that, and here this passage is saying that any man or woman praying or prophesying, I take this to mean he was describing things as they were in the church. There was a compound problem. He deals with, first of all, the problem of head covering um, in chapter 11. And let's remember that in the first century church, the problem was with the men, not with the women. All the women found it quite easy to cover their heads. They did it all the time. But the men, a Jewish man to this day, wouldn't dare come into the presence of God with his head uncovered. And, you know, priests, they, they cover their heads. Rabbis cover their heads. That's a standard thing in church, you see, because they're acting, they think they're acting like an Old Testament priest who had a hat, right? They think that's what they're doing. But the New Testament order takes the thing and turns it around. It's something radically new, that the man does not wear a covering and the woman does wear a covering. So, um, as far as I can see from this passage, uh, he's not teaching that. It's a logical fallacy to say that if the man uh, has his head uncovered, he can pray and prophesy. If the woman has her head covered, she can pray and prophesy somehow publicly. That's not what it means. I do take this as church order because he, he concludes by saying that the churches of God are all agreed on this matter. It's a church thing. It's not a family thing. He deals with family order in in Ephesians chapter 5, and there he doesn't talk about the head covering. He talks about the man as the head, and I appreciate a woman's zeal who in home order covers her head. When they're going to pray, she puts a covering over or whatever. I appreciate her zeal, but I think she's missed the point that what she's doing is covering her husband's God-given position in the home. In the church, Christ is the head, and therefore the man's glory is to be covered. In, in the home, the man is the head, and that's his rightful place, and it's not a matter of covering his head uh, in the home order. So it's a different order. Now, of course, our Mennonite sisters and others have come to the conclusion that this verse means whenever you pray, you should be covered, and they say, well, the Bible says pray without ceasing, so wear it all the time. Well, that's their conclusion. I don't think that's what the Bible is teaching here, because as soon as you do that, there is no order left, is there? It's not a matter of church order, home order, uh, you have broken down the distinction between these orders, and so now you put yourself in a position where there's no distinction made. It's similar to sisters who are taught to put their hats on at home so when they drive through the community, there'll be a good testimony. Well, it's church order. It's not driving to the meetings of the church order. The, the idea is, well, you know, sister, the, the, there are people who say, if in doubt, do it, right? That's the idea. We're never quite sure, so if you're not sure, go ahead and do it. Well, what's better is to be sure, to understand the principles and do it in an enlightened way so that it does mean something. So when we're coming in, we are recognizing now, we are stepping into a new sphere. We're coming into church order. The elders are accountable. Um, Christ is the head. The glory of man and woman is to be covered. And now we take our position. God gave the man a glory. He gave the woman a glory. It is appropriate that their glory be manifested in the proper orders, just not in the church. When we come into the sanctuary, God wants his son to get all the glory. So that order needs to be kept distinct.